Each year we talk to a lot of farmers who have lodging issues regardless of crop. We see it all over. It's not just corn, it's wheat, it's soybeans, many different crops. So I just wrote down a quick list of some of the things that I think we need to talk about today that relate to stock quality. For example, your levels of potassium, manganese and copper in the soil and in your plant, compaction, biologicals, planting depth, no excess nitrogen in relation to other nutrients, seed treatments, foliar fungicides. There are many, many things that can affect lodging and just overall stock quality. So we need to get into those just a little bit more in depth. All right, first of all, let's talk about hybrids because in 2018, we saw some hybrids that just fell apart in certain acres and certain environments and in other fields, they look great. Well, why are there big differences? This is why we're talking about stock quality today. Brian listed a whole bunch of different things that we would look at if someone called us and said, hey, I'm having an issue with my stocks. Can you help me figure it out so I don't have this issue again going forward? We just work our way down the list. Let's start with the nutrients. The big ones that we look at in terms of stock quality, obviously potassium is really important. You need lots of potassium, not just crop removal rates, you need many times that, that you're going to actually extract from the soil. Now your stover is going to hold a lot of that potassium and it's going to release as soon as that crop is harvested and you get some moisture to flush it out of the stalks. But still, we do wanna look at what our soil potassium levels are and then we wanna see where that potassium's at. What we've been finding across the country is a lot of that potassium is so stratified in the top inch or so of soil that when we get really dry, we have a hard time taking it in. So if we're into an area that had a period of drought, if that happened uh, at some point in your crop's life, you're probably going to have a stock issue uh, and you're gonna have a weakened stock. The other things that we look at are manganese and copper. These are two things that a lot of the farmers that we've talked to haven't even tested for. Now it doesn't cost much more to test for the micronutrients as well. So I'd encourage you do that on your farm, get a complete soil test. Well, one of the things that affects the nutrient availability, especially with nutrients like manganese, for example, is what your soil pH is. So it's not just about, hey, I applied a bunch of manganese, now I'm set. Well, where's your pH at? Where did you put that manganese? Is it in a form that's going to be available? You've got to ask yourself those questions. With manganese, for example, once you get above a 6.5 pH, you'll see the availability really start to drop off. So if you have one field at 6.5 pH and another field at 7.5, they could have identical levels of manganese, while well, the one's probably in good shape and the other one, not so much. With copper, that's another nutrient that can get stratified in soil a little bit, but typically we don't find a lot of farmers are applying much for copper. Copper is really important when we start talking about disease protection in that plant. And when you say stock quality issues, I first think about disease. So what do we have to do? We have to have the right fertility, especially with some of the micronutrients like copper. Hey, the other thing before we leave the fertility topic is nitrogen. And when we look at soil tests and we see, wow, we only have 1% base saturation K, yet we're really pushing it on nitrogen and going to high rates of nitrogen. When we get those things way out of line, we end up with issues and, and the plant just can't take it. What we see a lot of times is stock quality issues when we're short in potassium and really high in nitrogen. So just watch it. If you're seeing, well, hey, I put another 50 pounds of nitrogen on, but I never got a yield benefit from it. This could be one of the signals to you that maybe it wasn't nitrogen that you needed and you should be looking at other things. Yeah, and then in terms of when you apply your nitrogen, put it on when the crop needs it, get it into the crop when it needs it, as opposed to having a whole bunch of excess real early in the season. Then we start looking at compaction. Well, compaction could be poor drainage. It could be you don't have enough calcium in the soil. It could be that you're simply out there too early after rainfall too often. So when you have compaction out there, what happens is the roots aren't able to grow as big as they should. And when they can't, then obviously they can't feed the plant properly and you have stock quality issues. Now, the next thing I would look at is seed treatments. And seed treatments make such a huge difference in terms of stock quality because a lot of these stock rots and diseases that are going to show up later in the season actually started early season getting in through that root system. So if your crop has wet feet, 
you've got to protect it as best you can. You've got to improve your drainage, number one, but use a really good seed treatment. And there are some big differences in the industry today. We're seeing some seed companies go the cheap route on seed treatments, trying to keep costs down. But then we're seeing other companies adding additional ingredients like ethoboxum, for example, is one that's really made a difference on our farm. Uh, having that seed treatment in the package on the corn seed has helped protect us from more early season diseases, uh, especially like pythium. When we talk seed treatments, that's also typically where biologicals and plant growth hormones get involved. So just look at that overall package and what you're doing. When we start turning to, okay, I'm actually putting that seed in the ground, you gotta look at planting depth too. If you're planting at an inch and a half versus let's say two and a quarter inches deep, there very well might be a difference in how well your plant is rooting down. So that could be one of the things you could evaluate on your farm too. Personally, I prefer a planting depth around two, two and a quarter inches, maybe even two and a half in some cases, and I think we have a little bit better root system. And finally, foliar fungicides absolutely can help in terms of some of the late season diseases that come in and affect that stock quality. So you've got a number of things you can look at if you've had stock quality issues here in the last few years, but if it's me, I'm gonna start by looking at a good soil test. Stock quality is really important, but so is weed control. We'll show you how to stop this tough weed later in the show.